Hi everyone, it's Carrie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing some techniques with some Avery L liquid watercolors today. This is a new product to me. Um, just overall liquid watercolors is a new product for me. But I know that Avery L recently came out with their version of these liquid watercolors. So I thought I would go ahead and give them a try today. And I'm also working with this Avery L stamp set called Critter Crew. This is an absolutely adorable set. I, I love it to death. Um, it's a really great <laughs> collection of all those cr cute critters for a birthday uh, themed card. So that's what we're going to work with today. First up, I'm going to start off my card by using a piece of Tim Holtz Distressed Watercolor Cardstock. And I'm going to go ahead and prep it with my anti-static powder tool here because I am going to emboss this image. I want to black heat emboss it. So before I do that, I'm going to use my powder tool here to make sure that whenever I add uh, my ink and then my embossing powder, that the embossing powder only sticks to the ink and not anywhere else. So I'm really going to press this down because this is the first time I'm using this stamp. And I did stamp that down twice to make sure I got a really good deep black impression. I'm going to be using this uh, embossing powder. This is a new one for me. This is the Icicle clear embossing powder from Brutus Monroe and this since I've only used it once um, I really can't form a full opinion but so far I do like it and how it melted so I will continue to use it and let y'all guy let you all know that um, my opinion of it in a later video so I'm going to go ahead and heat set that with my heat tool make sure that's good and melted and make sure that those granules are Nothing left behind and as I start to watercolor. So you can see how smooth that was and it really did melt really nicely. So I've got just this uh, really plastic palette here that I just picked up at Walmart. And I've got four colors of the Avriel watercolors. And I do want to get some more colors, but these are the four that I picked up just to try them out because I didn't know if I was going to like them or not. So I've got celery, meant to be, cherry, and celery. Did I say celery already? Um, <clears throat> anyway, so all the colors will be listed below, as all of the supplies are always listed below in the description bar area. So in case you're interested in something that I used, uh, more than likely it will be in that, that area. I did uh, combine two colors here to create kind of a... I did do like um, uh, the red and the... It's not really a, a true yellow, it's a yellowish green, but um, I created this color using those two colors to get a little bit of a brown to do my box with, because it will obviously won't have a brown in the watercolor set that I bought. They don't really have a brown to purchase for at the moment, so I had to create my own color. Now, full disclosure here, I am nowhere near, <laughs> um, I wouldn't even call myself an amateur. <laughs> Uh, I am truly a, you know, beginner, beginner when it comes to watercolor. Um, you know, I've worked with it before, obviously, in some of my videos, but I don't consider myself, you know, a perfect uh, watercolorist at all. Um, and, but I do like to experiment and try new things. So that's what I'm doing and kind of getting, obviously, the look that I'm going for. So I first started off coloring that big box there and I will go back and add some little bit of uh, darker shading in some areas as I go along here. But I didn't want to color two areas of the same even though I heat embossed this image. I didn't want to color two images too close together because I didn't want them to bleed or give a chance for them to bleed. So I did take some of the red and I watered it down quite quite a bit to create a, a light pink color for my little pig. <laughs> and then um, I took a little bit of that, that darker or that uh, shade of pink that I created and I added just a little bit of the little brown color that I created and that gave me a little bit of a peach tone color and that's what I'm going to use for the little snout on the pig as well as his little belly. So it turned out really pretty good. I was actually pretty impressed with myself, if I do say so. <laughs> um, but um, I then I wanted to add, I didn't want to obviously fully color in the bunny. So, but to, I did want to add some color to him. So I just added a little bit of pink to his ears, as well as his cheeks and the underside of his tummy as well. 
Then I went ahead and colored in the party hats. I used the meant to be color for the party hats. Also the lemongrass. That's the other color, lemongrass. So it's kind of a yellowy green. It's not a true yellow. It's a yellowy green color. But um, so hopefully they will bring out a true more uh, vibrant yellow in the future. So I'm going ahead and using cherry for the little dog's party hat and then added some shading around it too. And then for the dog, I didn't want to leave it totally um, just, you know, white, but I wanted to add some color. So I added some of the brown just to half of his little body and then it created a little bit of color for him as well. My little computer was making noises, so it was bothering me. Sorry, you guys, if you heard that. Um, I also created a little bit of a gray color for my little owl. And I just colored it around the little top of his head and the, uh, the around his arms there to create some shadow. And then went back in to color in the rest of the party hats. And the deeper green, uh, this which is celery. And I believe I used celery for the rest of, rest of them. I'm not quite sure. But I will go back and use that gray to color in the little bear's nose because I forgot it, <laughs> actually. So there we go. There's a little bear's nose. And that will pretty much complete the watercoloring portion of my card today. It turned out pretty cute. I'm pretty impressed with myself, wasn't it? So I went ahead and die cut the image out from my panel. I also used a uh, stitched rectangle die. It's called uh, from Avery L as well. And it's called Finished Frames. And the reason why I went ahead and die cut it is because I wasn't for sure what I wanted to do with the background. I didn't even know for sure if I wanted to use the same panel that this uh, piece was on. So I've done this lately where I didn't want to create a mask. I just die cut the piece out and then I created a background without having to worry about the image that I colored. So I'm going to take the squeeze lemonade, uh, lim uh, squeeze lemonade oxide, distressed oxide color. And this blends like a dream. Oh my goodness. I mean, I knew that these inks blended well anyway because I do have them. But this color, this yellow, is just awesome. And then you combine it with a tattered rose and it's such a beautiful combination. I, this is probably one of my favorite two colors from the last uh, or the latest of the colors that were released. I absolutely love them. I'm probably going to be using them quite a bit. So... They just, they blend so well together. And then whenever you get them together, it kind of creates a little bit of a um, little peachy color. Uh, almost, this would be great colors for a sunset too. But they just blended so, so well. So what I'm going to do now is take, there is some like little confetti stamp pieces in this stamp set. And I'm going to take that little stamp and then using those same Distress Oxide inks that I use to blend my background. And I'm just gonna stamp with them with this little confetti piece here and create some confetti around my little animals. So I've taken both colors, the Squeeze Lemonade and a Tattered Rose, and then I'm going to pick out some little bit of brighter colors. So next I'm going to use Abandoned Coral, and that will bring in a little bit of brighter color to this panel here. So, and these stamp so well too. If you've never tried these Oxide inks, um, they're great for blending, but they're also great for stamping too, because they've obviously, if you haven't heard of it before, this these inks have a uh, a nice property to them where they have fused two uh, of the inks, the dye ink and the pigment ink together, and it just creates a really beautiful combination. So I also wanted to add some brightness with the green, so I used to just uh, Twisted Citron for that. And then now I'm going to work on my sentiment. This is, says uh, birthday wishes and it obviously comes from the same stamp set. And I'm going to ink it up with my Versafine Onyx Black ink here because I really want a bold sentiment with all these little pastel colors. And it will also tie in with the embossing that I did for my image. So I'm going to go ahead and take a piece of uh, lemon cardstock from, this is lemon tart, I believe. I don't think that's right, but it is from Gina K Designs, and I scored it at five and a half to make a top fold A2 size card. I'm just going to stamp this on the inside using that same tattered rose ink that I used before, 
to create a little bit of something on the inside of my card, as well as the another sentiment that comes from the same st the same stamp set, and it says surprise from all of us. And so, really nice uh, way to create the uh, create something on the inside. So I'm also going to be using a new glue to me. I'm I'm on a kick of using trying out new adhesives, uh, specifically liquid adhesives. So I'm using this new one here from Summon Sis Stamp. This is their tacky glue. And so far, I do like it. I don't know if it would replace anything that I have before, but uh, I do have it, and so far, it is one that I do like. So I thought about going ahead and just adding this back in, kind of like a uh, die cut inlay type thing, but I went ahead and decided to go ahead and pop up this image anyway, just to give a little bit of dimension because everything is just so flat to the card, and it's just a fun way to add just a little bit of dimension to my card. So I went ahead and got that into place and make sure that was all adhered down. And then for some final embellishment and some extra sparkle and shine, I'm taking my Nouveau Glitter Gloss uh, pen here. This will add a little bit of shimmer and shine to the little uh, glitter pieces, glitter pieces, <laughs> like party confetti pieces. And then I also added it to the party hats. So that completes my card today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I look at some new products that I have recently picked up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. Give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the tutorial. If you are interested in any of the products that I use, uh, be sure to, to check the description bar below. And I will see you on my next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>